Hello and welcome to TSG Foundation's Wisdom of the Zodiac. I am Gita Saradarian and today I am happy to present to you a beautiful chapter, Chapter 9, Aries, Path of Resurrection Taken from Wisdom of the Zodiac, Volume 1. This is a beautiful time of the year because for esoteric students it starts the spiritual new year. We start with Aries where the power of enlightenment or resurrection comes in and it shows us the path to go toward our spirit, our essential self. Then after this we have the full moon or the sun in Taurus which gives us the power of love and connectedness and then we get the energy of Gemini which gives the direction and the purpose of where we are going with our life. So these three full moons coming up are very very important. They are often called the three major full moons. So I will ask all of you who are watching and participating in these full moon celebrations to pay particular attention to your life at this time because life is going to show you in truth and in light where you are right now. Now that can be a personal shock or a huge cosmic shock for you in your life to see truly where you are and where you are heading. But if you don't know where you are going then how are you going to create that path and vision to where you want to go? So let's look at this first paragraph. I will read on page 101. We celebrate the resurrection of Christ in the sign of Aries. Resurrection means to have a great vision or goal and strive toward that goal with all your being. That means with all your being, physically, emotionally, and mentally. With every effort of striving, you must try to surpass yourself so that your vision will one day become a reality in your life. As you well know, if we want a vision to become a reality in our life, we can't just simply desire it. If we desire something, it is going to leave us flat and unfulfilled. From desire has to emerge aspiration, where you marry your wishes and dreams to your heart. And then after that, you have to take the next step, which is meditation. After that, striving. So striving means to put your desires, your aspirations into effective work that you do the work that you want to do to fulfill that vision. Now all of us have all kinds of visions. We have a vision for example for our personal life, our personal accomplishments in the material world, comfort, family life, and so on, money and professional um, interest for us. We have that vision and that's a good vision. We also have a vision for what we want for our family, for our group, we have a vision, for example, for our professional life, our business life. But there is something that all of those are encompassed under one vision. And that is, what do you want to be at the end of the day? When the day comes when you may need to make that um, serious look at your life and you're making a transition into the higher world, what is it that you want to have accomplished to be part of your vision? This is really important. So look at your life from its various perspectives, your personal life, your family life, your business professional life. And I'm sure you have certain things that you want to accomplish. You have visions as I do and, and many people do and we should have that. But also look at the overarching vision that you have articulated for your life that will have that pull for you in everything that you do. And once you identify that Strive toward it with everything that you have, especially at this time. I have found through my experiences that Aries gives you that um, power, that wind in your sails, the wind under your wings that will take you to the steps that you want. But it's very important that when you start something at this time that you have continuity. Many people, for example, start meditation courses or study courses or they go to meetings and they exercise or whatever. It's just like what we try to do at the beginning of January of each year, the calendar year. And after about 30, 40 days, they stop. Well, that is because that vision, that action, was a result of your desire. It should not be just a desire. It should be aspiration and striving. Think of those two words as you try to go through this period of Aries, aspiration and striving. We are told that resurrection never ends. Isn't that interesting? Because we think that resurrection was something that Christ did, that he promised that we would do as we follow his steps. 
But we also know that in many religious historical writings, there are many great ones who also resurrected, just like Christ did. But this is taking that definition even further and saying that resurrection for us never ends, that every day in, in the minutest amounts that you become your true self, your essence, and you let go of your fabrications, then you are really resurrecting. It is an everlasting, continuous process where when you finish one layer, there's another layer to be had until you become one with the flame of the cosmos. That is the vision that I'd like to impress on you, something that I will take with me, that I will continue to strive until my flame becomes one with the cosmos. Isn't that a beautiful image? So think about that and don't limit yourself to thinking of resurrection of Aries. Resurrection is something religious. Aries is something astrological, esoteric something or another. But look at it in terms of, look at what it says on page 102. Aries holds the secret of the beginning of cycles and opportunities. So a new cycle is starting for you, for everyone on this planet to become more their spiritual essence and to turn away from that materialism, that materialistic tendencies that we have in us that hold, uh, have a chokehold on us, a totalitarian hold on us. So we're going to change that. How are we going to do that? We begin to want to talk in new ways, to think in new ways, but this is such a difficult endeavor. I thought about that sentence as I took a long walk in the mountains near our home, and I thought, how do you know how to talk in a new way, to think in a new way, but to observe yourself? And that is a very challenging thing. So see if you can start this whole season as early as you can and take it through the next three months by observing yourself in a very, very clear way. How do you do observation? You observe the way you are physically, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way your furnishings are, the way you dress, the way you do your hair, your makeup, the way your gestures are. Observe yourself without any attachment or judgment and just say, is that what I want? Or do I want something totally different? So just observe that. And that's rather easy, but when you get to the emotional observation and mental observation, it gets a little more challenging, but very, very worthwhile exercise to do. I know because this is what I've been doing. How do we observe ourselves emotionally? Just look at the feelings that you're having and ask yourself, where's that coming from? The thoughts that you are having about others and about your life, where's that coming from? Do I have the faith and hope that I want or is that something that um, is slipping by me? So watch your emotions, watch the feelings, the ebb and flow of the feelings that go through you and then watch your thoughts. There is nothing more beautiful than to do meditation and watch how your thoughts are automatic and you click onto something, a subject, and it's just automatic and we think it's coming from somewhere. Well, it is the automatic stuff that's coming out that we need to really watch and that is the most difficult endeavor. But that's what we have to do. We start with how we talk and how we think. One of the ways that I have found to be very helpful is when you do go for a walk and you go for a walk by yourself, you try out different thoughts, you try, try out different uh, speeches, talking, and just try it out and see how it sounds. What do I sound like when I say this? How do other people respond when I say this or when I think this? So that you can sensitize yourself to what is going on around you and you're not just reacting to everything in life. Now, during the month of Aries, the energy of resurrection awakens and challenges you. You will see that when you are doing spiritual work, that this time of the year is going to present new challenges for you. It's very interesting. I see it because of the work that I do. People will be calling me and emailing me about the crises in their lives. And I always have to remind themselves, as well as me, that these crises are telling you something. And when you have that crisis in your life, it's a nice gift. And so don't get angry, but listen and watch and say, why is that happening? And what is this crisis telling me? And how do I take advantage of that insight and make a change in my life? So that's what the opportunity is. The opportunity is that we have a choice. And 
what's interesting about this, look at what it says on page 103. What is an opportunity? Every person translates the meaning of opportunity in his own terms. Isn't that true? There's also the opportunity to express something base instead of showing something great or the opportunity to reveal our selfishness and show off rather than the magnanimity of our soul. So we have an opportunity to go one side or another. So that is the choices that we make every single day in a hundred different ways. So this is very important for us to realize we have an opportunity, we have a choice to express ourselves in some form or another, and we can help it. We respond to any energy if we have the mechanism within us to do so. This is really important. This is what I have spoken about many, many times in our classes, that you are building a mechanism. You are building the tools of your physical body to express itself in a certain way, your emotions to express themselves in a certain way, and your mind as well. Those are your tools, your bodies, your vehicles, and they have to have training and you have that training through meditation, preparation, prayers, fasting, observation, mindfulness. All of these things are tools to build your vehicles so that they can express who you are on the inside. Now, there are four different keynotes in Aries upon which we can meditate during this time if we want to see the opportunities that are coming to us to be able to make the right choices in our life and to build the mechanism that we want that will sustain the changes that we make in our life. That's a very important statement, to sustain the changes that we are making in our life. So what are those keynotes? The first one is the express the will to be and to do. Okay, that's a tremendous power and energy and fire that comes to us at this time the will to be and to do. Now we have many different wills in us. If you wonder that if you have your true will or not, find out in how many ways you really make your own decisions and in how many ways you are manipulated. Manipulated. Interestingly, here is page 104, top of the page. This is one of the great manipulative techniques of materialism and totalitarianism, trying to make you not be yourself find out, sadly we can find out, how much materialistic tendencies we have and we are manipulated by those, the images that are forced on us by our culture, by our gender, by our religious and social upbringing, by our education, our parents, expectations from our bosses and co-workers, expectations from our family and friends. These can have a totalitarian effect on us a powerful impact on us that force us to act in certain ways and we have to make a Herculean effort not to let that happen. Trying to be yourself is not an easy process and you have to fight against the technique of materialism and totalitarianism in either way. And let me tell you, if you think of totalitarianism, you will see it is not just political, it's cultural, it is religious, it is spiritual in its wrong understanding that certain things we take on and we become those things because they are imposed on us in some form and they have a total control over us rather than we controlling our life. These other objects control our life. That's really beautiful and um, something that we have to really, really learn Daily when you speak with people, think, feel, and try to observe yourself to see how much belongs to you and how much does, does not belong to you. The things that we import and feel that they are ourselves are not really true us. I watch people and I observe myself as well and I realize how much on automatic pilot people are in their thinking, in their writing, in their speech, in their feelings. The genuine self is lost in a cloud and this is what you need to do at this point is to bring out that genuine self that you have and not have it be lost in the cloud of illusions and glamours. Why is that? Page 105 something profound comes out. If we keep 
thinking in terms of the past or even of the present, we are in the process of dying. That's profound and heavy. I know that we are told to live in the now. What does that mean? If we are living in the now and forgetting that the now is a result of the past, and if you keep perpetuating what happened in the past, you will go toward the future also in the past. So we are not going to think of living in the now per se as much as mindfulness. You are going to be mindful of what you are doing because what you are doing now is taking you to the future. Are you going to the process of dying? physically, emotionally, mentally, or are you going through the process of living, which is what resurrection is about. Resurrection is life. It is living. It is a point where you will be able to say, as Christ did, I am the resurrection and the life. You will be able to say that. It's not that something else that somebody did. It is something that you are saying because of the work that you have done about finding that true essence that you are. You are not importing physically and emotionally and mental baggage to be like somebody else, but you are being yourself. Now there is a second, third, and fourth keynote. Let me read them for you. And I hope you read this chapter and really study it. The second keynote is Unfold the Power to Manifest. Unfold the Power to Manifest. That is so beautiful. And I know that you can do that if you really pay attention to serious scientific meditation. If you want to know how to do that, write to me and I will send you information or you can take one of our meditation courses and really learn to meditate so that you unfold the power to manifest inside of you. Very, very important. Meditation is a process of manifesting your power, manifesting your true self. It is not just blank state of being. Okay. Third keynote of Aries is enter into the battle for the Lord. This was really, really an eye-opener for you. You think, what is a battle for the Lord? Is that somebody I'm battling for? And it's really interesting. We can have the glamour or the illusion that we are fighting for somebody. But really, what is the Lord? Here's a beautiful definition that I will leave you with. The Lord is the truth, its beauty, its goodness, its unity, universalism, and it is life. The Lord is the life and the light that you are fighting for for in your life and everything that you do, for the visions that you set, the standards that you set in your life, and the path that you take in your life. The fourth keynote of Aries is arrive at unity through effort. Unity through effort. You are not yet a unity. This is profound. If you think you're a unity, think about this and observe yourself. Your body works against your highest interests. Isn't that interesting? This is on page 108. Your mind works against your emotions. Is that the truth? Your emotions work against your plans and your life is in turmoil. You must work to unify and integrate yourself. And really again and again I will say the best way to integrate yourself, bring yourself together into one vision, one striving, one path, is to observe. Spend a week, two weeks, a month maybe observing and just journaling and see what are you really seeing and what are you doing every day in your life. The second part of that is meditation. Observation gives you the reality. Meditation helps you build what it is that you want. And you have to really learn to depend on your own inner sense of your divinity. This is so important. We try to import what divinity means by somebody else's standards best to find what it is for you because you have the memory of home inside of you. You have the memory of your archetype inside of you. Okay, So we are now going to do a very beautiful meditation and this is a very simple meditation that I encourage you to do for seven days during the Aries full moon. So you are going to start three days before the full moon. Days one, two, and three. Think about observation. The first day observe your physical Second, your emotional. Third, your mental life. Just observe and write it down and see where it is that you are going. On the fourth day, ask yourself, this is my plan for this seven day period. On the fourth day when you meditate, ask yourself, what is the great overarching vision for my life? What is that? And that's what we are going to focus on today. 
Now on the fifth and sixth and seventh days, here are the three keynotes that are contained in this chapter. If you have this book, it's on page 111. Take a look at it. If you don't have the book, let me tell you what they are. The first one is, what is the greatest interest in my life? Okay, that's day five. Day six, where is the focus of my consciousness? Just observe. Is it below the diaphragm or above it? There's a very interesting esoteric meaning to that, and I want you to think about it. And the seventh day, you meditate on the sea thought, is there a higher level where I want to focus my consciousness? Where is it? And how do I get there? If you pose these questions to yourself after due observation and due thinking about your vision, you have a seven-day period during which great changes can happen to you during this entire calendar or esoteric year. Remember, Aries starts your calendar of the esoteric year. Okay, it's a new year for you. So next year at this time, what are you going to look at? How much have you resurrected yourself? Okay, so let's do this meditation today. Focusing is what on the question, what is the vision for my life, the overarching vision? Okay, we will start with saying the great invocation. Sit up straight, relax, and I'd like you to put a nice smile on your face. It's very important not to be tense. We will say the great invocation together. And as we say this, think of the hundreds and thousands of people all over the world who are saying it with you. Okay, and bring that divine light, divine love, divine power, which is direction into your life. Relax and take a deep breath and exhale. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Let us say three ohms silently. Meditate on the question, what is the overarching vision for my life? Try to be very focused and look at the vision that you have for your life from a physical perspective, then emotional, then mental. Be very focused and make a mental note for each step and then add the spiritual so you have five or four rather vision statements that you are going to make for your life.
ask yourself when you accomplish these visions, when you see them happening, as you aspire and strive toward them, how will your life change according to that vision, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually? We will say a beautiful mantra. Please repeat after me and visualize what you are saying. More radiant than the sun. Purer than the snow. Subtler than the ether is the self, the spirit within my heart. I am that self, that self am I. See yourself as a shining light, a great sun, and radiate your light to everything around you. See yourself as bright, bright shining light, your vision of yourself. Thank you for being with me this time. And I hope we continue our journey together through these years zodiacal signs as we celebrate the sun in each zodiacal constellation. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for following these lessons and classes and doing your meditations. And if you have the Wisdom of the Zodiac books, read this one chapter. It is really a beautiful discipline that you do. It's just asking you to read for one week out of each month, this beautiful chapter, concentrate on its contents, do your meditation, and you will see how your life improves year after year. And if you don't have these books, I encourage you to get them. They are available on Kindle. They are available directly from TSG. And you can get the entire set at a discount, and you'll be really happy with them. And I continuously get feedback from people how much they enjoy these books. So I encourage you to get them and read them. They will change your life. So thank you for being with me and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.